Mumbai's nightlife is another unique madness. I'm going to meet self-proclaimed muckraker Ruchira Gupta in the infamous red light district, a million miles away from Bollywood. In 1998, I saw Ruchira's award-winning film, The Selling of Innocence, which is an expose of the flesh trade. She made the film after she visited Himalayan villages and noticed they were emptied of women between the ages of 15 and 45. Ruchira started a center called Apniap, which means on our own in Hindi. With that, she crossed the line from journalist to activist. As a journalist, I've covered war, famine, riots, and I've always moved on to the next story. But when I began to work on this documentary of sex trafficking, I just couldn't move on. I was so outraged about what was happening inside the brothels. I'd never seen this level of exploitation, and I felt that, you know, nobody deserved to go through this. They are locked up in these small rooms. They are raped repeatedly until their spirits are completely broken, and then they have to service about 20 to 25 clients a day. It's just outrageous. Sareka is a member of Apniap. She grew up in a village and was sold into prostitution at 15. She and her daughter, Shanti, are taking us to their home in the brothel. Ruchira tells me two things, stick close and do not film the clients. Those in the brothels are the last link in an institutionalized food chain. A pipeline is supplied from villages to cities by traffickers, boyfriends who turn into pimps, and sometimes impoverished parents who sell off their daughters to support the rest of the family. Ruchira is trying to change the mindset that allows little girls to become the first resource in poverty. My house. Your house? Yeah. Bedroom. Kitchen. AC. AC. Are these apartments or are this again beds and beds? It's like a hole in the wall, as you can see. There's no uh, window, there is no ventilation, uh, there's no light, and yet this is what they live in. This is all that they have for eight hours. And after eight hours, they have to give it up to the next person. They are servicing the clients in the bed, and the children are playing on the floor at the same time. In the room. In the room. There's no other space. They cook, they clean, they eat, they service their clients, they look after their children, all in that same space of four feet by four feet. The police try to extort money from them. These girls also have to offer free sex. They have to offer very young girls. Sometimes the policemen say, we don't want sex with you. We want you to give us a young girl. So they have to give one of their daughters or some young girl. Bye-bye. Ruchira and the women of the district have been making change against pretty devastating odds. The center is now the growth of your film. It is. It is in response to my film because the women that I worked with while making the film are the women who pushed me into starting this because they said that you'll come, make the film and go away. How will our lives change? So this is our office and the girls come in here and we register them. One of the biggest things that we've done is we've launched a membership drive by trying to restore their sense of identity. They had no ID, they were not considered citizens of India, they were not given access to healthcare. Mm -hmm. But with this ID card, now they belong to an organization, they have a sense of who they are. And inside this room, we have vocational training classes. A teacher comes and teaches them how to read and write and count. Most of our women don't have a home. What they do is rent a bed for eight hours every day and then they're thrown out. So then they try to sleep on the sidewalk. If they don't get space on the sidewalk, if it's too hot, too crowded, whatever, they just wander around the street. And it is so nice to walk in and just see the women sleeping peacefully. They're not scared. Nobody's harassing them. They can take a shower when they wake up, a cup of tea. And that is a, goes a long way in just restoring dignity in their lives. Most of the women in Apneap are HIV positive. One of our problems is that what are we going to do to help them? But uh, the big issue is that what's going to happen to their children? These children could uh, literally be th growing up on the streets when the mothers die. The boys will become part of gangs and the girls will end up becoming prostitutes. And we want to get the girls placed in boarding schools, the boys given some vocational classes. We try to build self-esteem through music and dance, and that goes a long way. But then we come to a dead end at one point when the girls turn 13 or 14, just at puberty, because we know that the brothel madams are going to put them into a prostitution. But a girl in the green dress, uh -huh. Nassim, she hasn't been in the business as yet. She was somehow protected because uh, the brothel madam liked her a lot, and she thought that she could get more out of her when she grew older. She was kind of skinny. 
and I was telling the madam that she wants to be a doctor, let her stay and study on for another year or two years. I was literally trying to buy time. So I had to sit and negotiate and negotiate and negotiate and finally the madam has agreed to give us one more year. What we want to do is actually uh, eradicate sex trafficking and the exploitation inside prostitution. What's the good news? The good news is that the women are willing to fight. Six years ago, they were so timid and they were so scared. They were not willing to even talk to each other. They did not let outsiders in. They are no longer the timid, disempowered women. If you work with people, you tell them about their rights, they're willing to stand up and fight. Has your spirit changed as you sort of move from journalist to activist? Yes, because as a journalist, uh, you go so far and then you back off. And, you know, you don't want the responsibility of changing the world. But as an activist, you go, you push and you push and you push till you feel that you've actually got a paradigm shift. A lot of the women I've met, they may be artists, they may be singers, they may be whatever, but they're also committed to a grassroots activism. I think that comes from the freedom struggle. And it continued in all kinds of ways, so social work or a commitment to changing things. Some people have the luxury to be activists and other people don't. So the people who have the luxury to be activists, it's almost like an additional responsibility that you do it. The village girls sold into sex slavery are victims. But with support and voice, they aren't powerless. And Ruchira would never call herself a warrior, but she is one. It's strange when the brightest light comes from the darkest places. Sex trafficking happens all over the world, and it's a flip side to India's light and optimism. Somehow it all lives together.